With colder weather approaching, you guys better know how to make a classic beef stew. This childhood favorite of mine is a cold weather staple, and who doesn't love a hearty and warming one pot meal anyway? I'd also say it's perfect for meal prep, but odds are you're not gonna have a lot of leftovers, so you might wanna plan ahead and just make a second batch. All right, let me show you how to make it. To get started, you'll need to peel and slice four carrots. Though, based on the comments on my previous vegetable soup video, many of you prefer to not peel your carrots, and that's totally fine. So anytime I say in videos to peel carrots, just know that you can peel or not peel, it's up to you. I'm also slicing my carrots on a bit of a diagonal today because I just think it looks pretty in the stew, but you can slice them straight across as well. And once your carrots are all sliced up, add them to a prep bowl. Next, slice up three ribs of celery and add them to the same prep bowl along with the carrots. Then slice in half one pound of baby white potatoes. If you have some baby potatoes that are on the bigger side, you can quarter those. So just think along the lines of bite-sized chunks. Now, if your market happens to carry those mini potatoes that are even smaller than these, you can then leave those ones whole and add them straight into the stew. But if you're slicing up potatoes like I'm doing today, once you're done, go ahead and add them to the bowl along with your celery and carrots. Slice up one large yellow onion, and instead of dicing it as you'd normally do for soups or other saute recipes, you can just slice it in two large pieces, which for me is about two to three slices in each direction. This beef stew is all about chunky, hearty pieces of meat and veggies, so big chunks are totally fine. And then smash and peel four garlic cloves on your cutting board, and you'll mince those straight into the pot over on the stove. So let's talk about the meat for this stew. You'll need two pounds of beef stew meat, and you've got a couple of options when it comes to buying it. You can buy stew meat from your meat department that the butcher has already chopped into cubes for you, which is what I typically do. Or you can buy a slab of chuck roast and slice it into cubes yourself. The latter may seem a bit more tedious, but you can then also pick and choose the meat that's marbled to your liking. So really, it's up to you. Pat the beef chunks dry with a paper towel and then transfer them to a plate to season. Season all sides of the meat with salt and freshly ground black pepper. And I'm using about one and a half teaspoons of salt and half a teaspoon of pepper, but you can always season to your liking. And with that, everything is now prepped. So let's get started with the stew. Heat two tablespoons of olive oil or avocado oil in a large pot or Dutch oven over medium high heat. And then working in batches, place the beef in the pot and sear it on all sides until it's golden, which should take about two to three minutes per side. And you do wanna work in batches and not crowd your pot because too much meat in the pot all at once will cool it down and prevent a nice golden crust from forming. And that golden seared crust not only adds incredible flavor to each piece of meat, but it adds massive depth of flavor to the broth. The French term for these browned bits of meat stuck to the bottom of the pan is fond. And don't worry about it looking like it's all burned on right now, as we'll deglaze the pan here in a second. So once both batches of meat have been seared, remove them to a bowl with tongs. Add the chopped onion and four minced garlic cloves to the pot, and the onion will naturally release moisture as it cooks, which helps to unstick the fond, but what really helps to declaze the pan is two tablespoons of red wine vinegar. You can see almost immediately after I add the vinegar that the brown bits remove easily from the bottom, so then you can use your spatula to scrape those up as you saute the onions and garlic for about three to four minutes. Then add one tablespoon of tomato paste, which again adds more depth of flavor to the stew, and stir that for another minute. At this point, you'll add the meat back to the pot and sprinkle two tablespoons of flour on top and stir that until it's fully dissolved. I'm using arrowroot powder today as I'm gluten-free, but you can also use cornstarch or whichever flour you prefer. Now, here's where I differ from other recipes online. Some will have you adding a quarter cup of flour, but when you're finished, the liquid will resemble more of a really thick gravy, and then you're told to thin it back down with more liquid, which seems counterproductive. I find that two tablespoons of flour is perfect and the starch from the potatoes will also naturally thicken the broth when boiling. But if at the end you do decide that you like it thicker, that's totally fine. You can then stir together some broth from the pot along with one to two tablespoons of flour and add it back into the beef stew. The next ingredient is one cup of red wine and this really adds a richness to the stew. But if you're alcohol free, you can replace this with more beef broth. 
And you guys know I love my CO2 wine bottle opener. It's one of my favorite kitchen gadgets and I've linked it below for you. So add the red wine to the pot along with four cups of low sodium beef broth, half a teaspoon of dried thyme and two bay leaves. Stir that together and bring the broth to a boil, then reduce the heat to low and simmer it partially covered for an hour. After an hour, you'll add the potatoes, carrots, and celery to the pot, stir those into the stew, and then cook for an additional 20 to 30 minutes or until the vegetables are fork tender. And that's it, your beef stew recipe is now done. Now, don't forget to pluck out the two bay leaves before serving, and sometimes you do have to search around for them a bit, and then add the stew to individual bowls. My dad always loved Irish lamb stew, and I have a separate recipe for that on my website, but for me, it's always a toss up between my lamb stew recipe and this classic beef stew. I'd say the beef stew is a bit richer and thicker and definitely perfect for rainy or snowy days. The meat just melts in your mouth, the veggies are tender, and the broth is so warming and comforting. This really is one of the coziest recipes you can make that'll warm you up from the inside out. And I am now more than ready to dig in and take my bite. Oh yeah, I do love <laughs> a good pot of stew. Let's see if I can get a piece that's not too big. Mmm. Mmm, so good. Here's another good spoonful with a good, a good chunk of meat. It is rich and flavorful and the meat is just fall apart tender. If you have simmered it long enough, the meat should just fall apart. But the veggies are cooked perfectly. They're not too soft, they're not mushy. They still hold their shape perfectly well. Uh, they're fork tender. It's like the perfect combination. The gravy is also perfect. It is thick enough to be hearty, but it is not um, like overly viscous. It's not gravy. Stew is not meant to be a gravy. It's just meant to be a really warming, thick liquid or thicker liquid, but you don't want it like a, a turkey gravy. That is far too thick. So it's kind of an in-between of a soup and a gravy. It's just perfect. Um, which is why I think you guys are gonna love this recipe. In terms of storage, this will last for four to five days in the fridge, though as I mentioned at the beginning, I don't think it's gonna last that long because with a family, you guys are gonna polish this off pretty fast. Um, if you do make a second batch, it will last for up to three months in the freezer. So you can make a batch, save it for several months, and then reheat it on a night when you don't feel like cooking. I hope you guys love this new beef stew recipe, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Share it with your family and friends who love really nourishing, warm, and hearty meals, and I will see you again in the next video.